friend, we propose to have a bird eye view of Indian languages and literatures in this lecture. As you know, India is a multiracial, multireligious, and a multilingual country. Out of the world's ten principal languages, India has two main languages or language groups. Number one, Indo-Aryan or Indic. Number two, Dravidian. There are some other families of languages also, such as Austric, Pishacha, and others, but they matter very little as far as their importance or their literatures are concerned. Principal Indo Aryan languages number 15 is given in the Indian constitution. Of these 15, three are non regional. By non regional, I mean they are important languages or they have been important languages like Sanskrit, but they have no region of their own. These are number one, as I mentioned earlier, Sanskrit, which is a classical language, a very important language for the unity of India, but unfortunately, it was in the past that it was current to some extent, but today it is a studies as a classical language. In this category, the second language is Urdu, which is a very important modern Indian languages, but it has no region of its own. It is the sixth principal language of India, scattered practically all over India, from Punjab to Deccan to Bihar and Madhya Pradesh, etc. Its speakers are found even in Tamil Nadu and Kannada region. The third language which is a recent phenomena as far as India is concerned is Sindhi. Now Sindhi is a living language, has been a very ancient language, but it was confined to the province of Sindh which is now in Pakistan. But after the partition of India, many immigrants are Sharnartis as they are called, they have come to India and settled all over India, principally in Bombay, Delhi and such places. But they are recognized for constitution by the constitution as the important languages of India. The other languages to mention a few are, if we begin from the west, Kashmiri, which is not an Indo-Aryan language, which, which is a Pishacha language, but is a very important language in certain aspects. Punjabi, again divided into two, its speaker reside in Pakistan, Punjab also, as well as in Indian Punjab. And then of course, Hindi with its many dialects is spoken in Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and adjoining areas. Then we come 
to the east further bengali a very important literary language odia and assamese another indo aryan language which lies to the south is marathi marathi is again a very important language as far as the number of speakers is concerned or as far as the level of literature is concerned further proceeding to the south we come face to face with the dravidian family of languages now the question arises who were the dravidians and how is it they have clustered in a certain southern part of india and from where they have come there are many speculations about the origins of dravidian languages but now it is settled that the dravidians have come from the mediterranean areas via balochistan because we have a dialect of dravidian very strange to speak in balochistan kal baruhi this is the only island of dravidian languages outside the indian dravidian areas then coming to the south we first meet telugu which is exactly what telugu desham or andhra pradesh is today telugu is a rich literary language highly influenced by sanskrit although its skeleton grammar is its own nothing to do with the indian grammar but its literary traditions as well as higher vocabulary literary and otherwise is derived from sanskrit next to telugu we come we meet kannada kannada again is spoken in the area and used in the area known as karnataka today because these are linguistic states so they are they conform to the area and there is conformity between the area and the language spoken kannada is again highly influenced by sanskrit for its higher literature and vocabulary and literary traditions but the most typical dravidian language not at all influenced by sanskrit is tamil and that is why tamil may be said it is the core of dravidian culture and dravidian languages there is anti hindi feeling as you know in tamil land which has come time to time expressed in different types of demonstrations tamil has got its own traditions its own philology its own linguistic trends and its own ancient grammar as old as that of sanskrit and the millions are very proud of the independence of their language and recently as you know they had a world tamil conference which passed many resolution about the greatness of tamil tamil is important also in the sense that part of sri lanka is tamil speaking 
area. And today, as you know, for the last several years, there is a movement to have a separate Tamil homeland in Sri Lanka, which is continuing, continuing even today, because in the northern part of Sri Lanka, there is a concentration of the Tamil-speaking population and they want to have their own homeland. One more language of this group remains called Malayalam. Now, Malayalam is of recent growth. That is, well, that is, it separated from Tamil only in the 13th or 14th century as an independent language. Earlier, it was thought to be a dialect of Tamil. Strangely speaking, while the superstructure of Tamil language is non-Sanskritic, the superstructure of Malayalam is highly Sanskritized. So in this way, Sanskrit dominates as far as the higher levels of expressions are concerned. in Telugu, Kannada and Malayalam, only with the exception of Tamil. As far as the northern Indian languages are concerned, what I termed as Indo-Aryan or Indic, there is no doubt that with the exception of two languages, Sanskrit and French is predominant and the superstructures of these languages, whether Assamese, whether Bengali, Uriya, Hindi and its dialects, they are, or of course Hindi itself, they are over Sanskritized. In this area there are two exceptions, we do not accept the Sanskritization trend. One is Urdu and the other is Kashmiri. For historical reasons, these two languages accept their linguistic superstructure from Perso-Arabic side. Urdu is written and Kashmiri is also written in a foreign script. While these scripts of the Indo-Aryan languages, they are derived mostly from Brahmi, of course with different shades, but they converge on the Brahmi script. The Urdu script and the Kashmiri script and to some extent Punjabi of West Pakistan and Sindhi also, they take their cue from Perso-Arabic script of course modified according to the phonology of these languages. So this is one major difference between Urdu and Hindi. The other is that these languages for their superstructure or for their higher development do not look towards Sanskrit, they look towards Prakrit. Urdu is either Perso Arabic vocabulary or the indigenous vocabulary, the basic structure is taken from Prakrit. Urdu doesn't use the Sanskrit vocabulary. There are thousands of words which differentiate Urdu from Hindi only because Hindi uses Tat Samas, that means Sanskrit vocabulary and Urdu uses Tad Bhavas, that is the Prakritic vocabulary. They call it Surya, Chandra, Urdu it is Chand and Suraj and thousands of words. Now coming to the central or Hindi region, which is the most important region from a linguistic point of view and which has a claim 
for a pan indian languages or a language of high national status this region is again divided between as far as literary traditions are concerned between hindi and urdu now hindi is a covering name it includes under its literature not language brit bhasha literature avadi literature bhojpuri literature and the rajasthani dialects literature all put together they are called hindi surdas is a hindi poet malik mohammad jaisi is a hindi poet tulsi das is a hindi poet rahim khan khana is a hindi poet ras khan is a hindi poet now this covering type of movement is uh, literary movements it creates difficulties for hindi as well and also gives a status among the uh, other indian languages the problem created is this that brit bhasha or avadi the two principal dialects which have which are very rich in literature they they linguistically they differ very much from khadi boli on which hindi is based they are o based brit bhasha is o based khadi boli is a based ending is ghora mera tera etc they are ghoro mero tero goes on and that is why a great hindi writer chandra sharma guleri has said that brij bhasha is a padi boli a boli which is lying flat it became a khadi boli when it assumed the garb of khadi boli on which hindi is based and he says it was due to the influence of muslims that a padi boli was made standing boli khadi boli and then it first came into vogue in the form of urdu and later on in the form of hindi and it is a fact that khadi boli literature in the form of urdu which was designed by amir khusro as zaban e delhi was first developed in dakkan not in nagpur where this zaban e delhi or khadi boli was taken by the armies of alauddin khilji and mohammed bin tola later on the delhi sultans withdrew and after the development of bahmani kingdoms which is split into several smaller states two very important state of golconda and bijapur they were the real bastion of the development of khadi boli in the form of dakhani overlaid with a super structure of persian and arabic taking all the literary traditions from arabic but still having the stories and myths from the indian soil they first developed delhi zaban e delhi or khadi boli into a literary form north was busy with either bridge or avadi or persian at the court language of culture and culture. they never cared for this boli which was spoken in the bazaars of delhi and whom husro gave the name of zaban e delhi and its environment only in 18 in 1700 round about 1700 when wali the great poet of aurangabad dakkan he came to delhi 